everyone and welcome to Spirituality Without the Bullshit podcast. I am your host Natty Beats and today I'm going to be talking about the darker side of light work with one of my amazing mentors, Wolfgang, and I'm so fucking excited to have him on the show. Wolfgang, will you please introduce yourself? Well, I'm Wolfgang and uh, next year I turn 70 years old and I started my spiritual path. <laughs> Uh, when I regularly meditating at the age of 24 and I studied fine art and philosophy. I lived six years in India and six years in a spiritual community in America. Um, my, um, so I work full time here now on helping clients. My specialty is I help them get in touch with their high self. I ask the questions and they get the insights, you know, themselves in the healing too. So I, I like to empower them, you know, I'm not yep. doing the work for them. I'm not like a psychic reader for people. This is you how know, you I, met me. <laughs> yeah, you know, so I, yeah, as an empath, you know, I feel people's energies and then I give them feedback, you know. Uh, how to optimize it, you know, how to get there fast. And, um, you know, I'm also a battery, you know, providing life force. Um, so they can get to places where they haven't been before, you know. So if they have been here, you know, I can help them to get there or, you know, even higher. Yeah. Um, so we just make sure they don't burn out. <laughs> Yeah, right. As someone who has had the pleasure of using your energy battery several times when I'm channeling, I can <laughs> I can vouch for its power. It definitely got me from somewhere in the mid range to pretty much blasting through the sky. Um, and I'm also going to say as well that um, the him introducing his sessions there does not even begin to cover the absolute fucking magic that takes place. Uh, within these sessions. I mean, I discovered Wolfgang a, a few months after my insane spiritual awakening and this guy opened my eyes up to some pretty crazy shit. A lot of that stuff we are going to be talking about today. I think that it is stuff that is not talked about enough within the spiritual community and especially not without the bullshit. So everything on this show is taking the weird stuff, taking the out there stuff, um, and talking about it just in normal language for normal people so that it's more accessible and we don't have any wafty wafty crap. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, Wolfgang, so you've obviously been doing this work a really, really long time. Um, I can't believe you're nearly 70. That's absolutely crazy. You do not look it at all. Another testament for doing energy work, right? You just look young forever, live forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, push about as much weight as my son. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, I mean, in the gym, you know. Yeah. Is uh, I use a lot of chi, you know, and I take bath, you know, that is and keep myself pure. Yeah. Um, I yep. mean, I'm not fanatically eating as such, you know. I mean, I'm a vegetarian. And, and but so en on. Energy does great things for you, right? I mean, just using these energies all the time, keeping yourself higher vibration for all your clients. And you, you've obviously been doing this work for, how long have you been doing this work for now? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I started like, I mean, fully dedicated when I was 27. You know, this That's is so 14 years lifetime. ago. Yeah, yeah, I, I gave up my career. You know. Yeah. So give us, I would love to, um, I know you have an amazing um, like two hour video on your channel that goes through your whole spiritual journey. I massively recommend anyone to go and check that out after this as well. It's a Tools for Ascension YouTube channel because um, your story is absolutely amazing. But if you could give us, so that we can get an idea of who you are, a little kind of brief history of your kind of spiritual journey from 40 years ago up to the work that you do today. Okay, so, um, well, in my time, um, transcendental meditation was a new thing. And, uh, you know, once, you know, this girl, you know, said, oh, God, you got to meditate. <laughs> you know, it is so cool. And so then when a year later, I was on the flea market, look, and a book, you know, how to meditate. And, um, well, yeah, I, this image popped up and you know, I got the book, you know, and, and then I went into a forest and did a mantra there. And um, that was in fall. And uh, so I was completely gone. You know, I mean, there was no awareness of time. And I hear, um, you know, in the dry leaves, you know, a, a noise. 
And somehow my mental processes were from absolute nothing to nobody could have snuck up there. There are leaves all around me. How is this possible? And the next thing I'm standing like this, you know, in a perfect low stance, you know, from a yeah. sitting so cross like sitting are, position. People that are listening, he's in a like a fighting stance. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, perfect form. <laughs> I don't even know how I got out of this thing. You know, I mean, I just jumped up and I mean, the perfection of this just surprised me, you know, more, um, you know, than I was kind of gone. And so, you know, so I was, you know, hooked. I knew there was something uh, there. And then um, there was an ashram there. I started chanting Om Namah Shivaya. And uh, oh my God, you know, I cranked this up on my stereo system. There was one recording that I really loved. And I blasted this, and this is the great breathing exercise. And so, I mean, now Shiva is like the Lord of transformation; it's an aspect of God. You know? Yeah. And uh, oh my God, my life changed so much. I mean, it was like in the movies. I mean, I was studying fine art. You know, I mean, academy level fine art, Bohemia. And so this was, uh, you know, very interesting people. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it just got way more far out. I mean, you know, people look at my photo galleries, they may get an idea. <laughs> and, you know, I, I mean, I also traveled, you know, around the world. Um, so, uh, God. Uh, yeah, and ultimately, you know, I, I after finished my exams, uh, I went to Sri Lanka with a former monk who was preaching Christianity at the time. I mean, uh, but uh, so we went to Sri Lanka and I lived there till I got kicked out and I went to India and I decided, you know, to become enlightened. <laughs> just decided, just decided just, one day. <laughs> I, yeah, I just decided, you know, that's it. I'm not going to go back. I'm not going to be a, I mean, I really considered this, you know, I'm going to be a high yeah. school teacher. Uh, I would have been a professor of fine art, you know. I mean, thank God that you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I would have touched, but I wouldn't have been, you know, um, the person that I'm now, you know, that is, yeah. uh, I would have been much more low level, you know, I would have inspired a lot of people, you know, for yeah. sure, but not on, on that level. Here not now. on the level. That, <laughs> yeah, not on the level you work at now. <laughs> no, no, no. You know? And um, so there was also the life of a traveler. You know, that is a good thing. You know, maybe you work in Alaska, you know, on the pipelines, you know, for half a year and then, you know, live a year in the third world somewhere in Thailand or two years. You know? I saw many people like that. Yeah. So, but I decided to become enlightened and, and took it from there. And how, and how was how was your process of enlightenment for those, for the, all those listening who decide that they also want to become enlightened? I know you have quite a unique uh, uh, story. There's not not many people that are able to go and travel and, and go through what you went through in this way, but so many people are going through kind of awakening in different levels at the moment. Um, and I think it's really helpful for people to understand just different, just pe real stories about real people getting to where they, where they got to with their spiritual work. All right. Well, I mean... I would say for most people, uh, for many people, you know, either they wake up or it's through drugs. You know? I mean, it's either spontaneous, you know, or it has a little help from yeah. a friend, right? <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, I mean, you know, as a student, as a high school student, I mean, I definitely experimented with psychedelics. And, um, you know, I mean, also, you know, Red Huxley, <laughs> you know, I wasn't just parting my brains off, you know, I was, you know, keenly, you know, observing what was happening, analyzing, playing around with it. And I mean, I saw halos. I saw, you know, my girlfriend turning into a high self, you know, she looked like a Madonna. I mean, you know, I've had supernatural experiences, you know, yeah. all along with and without drugs, you know. And um, so I knew this was real. You know, I was not a person of blind faith. You know. Um, yeah, I I feel that I've I've never believed in anything until I've experienced it, and that's this, no matter how much I experience things. Still, if someone tells me something that I haven't experienced it, I still don't fully believe until it until it comes through to me. I guess I'm just a I'm a bit of a skeptic in that way because a lot of this stuff, uh, until you've experienced it, I think it is quite hard to to grasp the concept, to have a reference point for it. 
Yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, well, you know, and then I, um, I mean, even, you know, uh, I, you know, this, the, the, I studied Bhakti Yoga. So this is a devotion of the heart. And uh, I, I had great experiences doing this. You know, I basically learned, um, you know, Indian scripture, Hindu scripture. You know, I was initiated as a Brahmin. Uh, you know, um, the whole nine yards, you know, um, the, the yeah. outfit, you know, actually, um, I was sent, you know, on certain missions, you know, to major temples in India, like uh, Jaipur, and uh, other places, you know, to get certain documents and the local Brahmanas, you know, they always, you know, wanted to check me out. Now here, there is a white guy, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, dressed in our stuff. You know, I mean, this is like a Native American looking at white hippies, <laughs> you know, yeah. thinking yeah. they're so cool, you know, <laughs> and they're, oh God, you know, they don't know how it is on the rest, you know, mm-hmm. and so on. You know, so uh, yeah, so that was probably similar. So they always, you know, yeah, okay, you know, why don't you sit over there, you know, and uh, just wait, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so you know, yeah, I mean, you know, so I spent like you know, sometimes you know, half a day sitting next to like this guru, you know, giving darshan in Hindu, <laughs> in Hindi, you know, having no clue what he's doing. You know, so I'm just, you know, doing my meditation and blissing out. And so then after, you know, yeah, two days, they're like, okay, you know, yeah, here are the papers, you know, and, you know, they invited me on, on the altars, you know, I mean, any white person going on this would be killed normally. You know, so yeah. they're like short respect, you know, they figured out who I was, you know, they wiped me out, you know, these you know, very perceptive, sensitive people. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, it is when you bypass all of the outer outer the exterior of what people look like and everything people who are energy sensitive they're able to see you for you they're able to see your soul your energy and and feel that shit straight away <laughs> i'm not surprised you got invited onto the altars <laughs> oh yeah in india you know i mean um there was a rathiatra and you know i was photographing there and then somebody was performing an arty there and you know like under the roof and it was wonderful. I mean, it stopped like perfect on the clock. I mean, that was just blissful. And when I walked on the street, I mean, I was like all blissed out. People would just bow. You know, I mean, people and I, you know, I walk, you know, on those streets many times. You know, they yeah. bow, you know, they only bow with their, they know, you know, where you're at. They can see yeah. this, you know. I mean, I had people kiss my feet, you know. That would that freak me out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you never, you know, but uh, I mean, yeah. out of gratitude, I mean, there are people trying to dump karma or as a show, but there were people that were very, yeah, gracious, you know, and they uh, changed their life. Yeah. You know, and that was just like really ABC stuff. <laughs> you know, it was nothing what I'm doing. Now, D- right, exactly. Well, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today is the stuff that you're doing now. Um, because again, it's some of the, a lot more out there stuff, a lot of the um, the healing modalities that I use now. I learned from you the methods that you use, following your methods and having sessions with you and then learning how to use them um, on my clients. And like I said, the, the amount of stuff that I've learned off you that every time I have a session, something else comes through and I'm like, is that real? Fucking hell. Is this real? Now we've got, we had, <laughs> well, all sorts, wizards and yetis and dragons and oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> coming through so um i want to jump in and just talk a little bit about like the darker element of light work because i think that there is this misconception in the spiritual industry as there are many misconceptions out there that um being a light worker is all light and fluffy and you're just kind of sitting on your cloud doing your meditation and wearing your white clothes and it's all up here and very nice um a lot of people understand that there's like shadow work and you have to work through the shadow and the darkness but what people don't talk about is things like the like entities and the attachments and the psychic attack and all of that shit that we have to deal with um that if you're not protected from it it can really kind of see you come undone a bit <laughs> yeah right no, you can get hit you know um yep. this is uh, really important 
you know, and let's just start with the down to earth stuff, you know, and then we can go more and more, you know, into the abstract, into the groovy <laughs> you know, good, realms, good. you know, uh, because <laughs> probably, you know, many of the professionals, they run into this. So first of all, you know, I also, you know, I used to give massage, you know, mm -hmm. and my own style, uh, one and a half hours, you know, um, just a few clients. <clears throat> uh, but uh, so, you know, and you can pick up from people, you know, bad energy, you know, so fast, you know, I mean, I once gave a massage to a massage therapist. And I mean, she was already, you know, kind of yellow in the face. Mm -hmm. And when I touched her immediately, I had a headache, I should have just walked away. You know, I should have just be rude. And she was, you know, uh, she stood me up anyhow one time. So she was rude anyhow. But, yeah. uh, you know, um, basically I was sick for a couple of days. And, you know, some of that stuff, it took years to get out. You know, hey, she was yeah. giving eight massages a day, didn't do any type of purification, you know. Yeah. And I mean, she was just full with it, you know, so untouchable, so to say. You know, I should have just left it alone, even blowing a conch on her and clearing her with my wand, you know, I, I do, you know, clear the, the, yeah, I clear the body of chi, you know, before I even yeah. touch anybody. I also, you know, cleared with conch and with, uh, with a conch shell. And if That's people- That's your shell that you blow. This, yeah, this is something like <laughs> this here, you know, and- So I would just stand like a, about two feet in front of the person at the root chakra, then stand up, blowing this thing up to here. They had to have their eyes open so they wouldn't just fall off. <laughs> and Blast so much the energy. She just would come out, you know, all the dark chi. You can make a small uh, exorcism with this, you know? I mean, yeah. like small critters goes from a flop house, you know, they, they just leave right there. Well, you've done, it. You've done that one um, on me before when we were doing a a healing and you had me in a past life and there was that big there was like a big spider was stuck to my face um and you <laughs> first of all you were laughing at me I remember because we well we laugh a lot just to make a point he's not being mean we laugh a lot in sessions it's it you have to keep a light headed light-hearted when we're doing this work um because it is quite heavy stuff yeah. but he was laughing at me and then he could feel the spider on his face so he just got out of this shell out of nowhere and that noise so I had my eyes shut deep in meditation in a past life and I just suddenly hear <laughs> I opened my eyes to see the shell but it did it, it was literally like getting a leaf blower and I could feel the energy just blasting off getting rid of it um, so it's something that that uh, looks very comical and I love the sound of it but it really works it packs a punch <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I discovered this thing on a German mineral show, you know, I was the vendor, um, you know, there, this was in Tucson, the biggest German mineral show in the world, you know, in a hall on a Saturday, you know, with the whole school having, <laughs> this, you know, their, uh, what's the exploration day, this mm -hmm. place was packed, you know, and then there was this, you know, nutcase that blew the conch shell, and I could feel how the ethos were clearing. You know, I was just, wow. I mean, I knew this from a temple, you know. I mean, we, yeah. before every art team, you know, and afterwards, you know, you blow the conch shell. I mean, I knew that, but that was temple. But here in that, that chaos, and I went, wow. I asked him to do it again, and yeah, <laughs> it worked, you know. And yeah. so that's why I adapted. You know, I always observe, and then what is most powerful, um, I use. You know, so the Jewish horn, it has the same effect, sounds very much the same. Gongs work similar, but it's just a trip, you know, to, you know, have a gong there. Yeah, I think sound, sound, sound is so powerful with, with healing, with clearing, um, especially, yeah, like I said, like the gongs, I've had a gong bath before, and oh my God, when you could just feel the vibrations, but I love, I love anything that blasts through it. The crunch is so quick as well. It's almost just like, it cuts, cuts straight through all the crap going on. You? <laughs> now, the, the thing is now when we go to, you know, side effects, you know, so the, a lot of chi comes out, you know, mm -hmm. so there's, this, I've imagined there is a dark cloud coming out. Now this can attach to you. Yeah. You know, through static. 
Mm-hmm. So this is once you've once you've uh, done the conch shell on someone oh, else, right? You know, I can see it. You know, sometimes I have to duck away and step away and then ask for heavenly vacuum cleaners to pull it up. Yeah. And uh, once it happens, <laughs> not what, but what a trip that was. Um, so I had a group of about 15 people. And then somebody, somebody, a completely new person comes in late. You know, and I'm okay. You know, let's let him in. So I blow the conch on him. As soon as I blow the conch, an entity jumps out of him, <laughs> jumps into a new person. I mean, she has never <laughs> been there, you know, into okay. the chest. She, she jumps off a chair, rolls <laughs> on the floor, grabbing her chest. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, see things like that like people listening who who are fairly new to this spiritual work but may hear a story like that and be like what the actual fuck but this shit happens like yeah. this is what you have to part of what you have to deal with being an energy healer being being a psychic Things can jump out of other people and jump into I mean, you. This, this, this was rare, <laughs> you know? This yeah. has happened, you know? Yeah, it, it does. But I think it's important that people people are aware of that and that they are aware of what they can do to protect themselves and what they can do to, to clear it again. It's not none of the things we're going to talk about today. I want to make it clear that none of this is to scare anyone. As you can hear, it, we're both laughing about it. Like we say very much working with that in a child all of this stuff is pretty hilarious um so try not to get too worried or bogged down with it but it's just really important to be aware that these things can happen that these things are out there and, and what you can do about them pretty much so what what did you do <laughs> well um well first of all you know i invoked you know uh, my protection you know so i have certain deities i worshipped for years you know that are very fierce <laughs> You know, I, in a dream, I can, when I know somebody messes with me, I can call it in the dream, you know? So yeah. I called that one in, and I also, you know, blew the conch on the lady and just blasted this entity, you know? I mean, uh, that entity left very fast, you know? I mean, when I cheer up <laughs> and go into combat mode, <laughs> you, know? Uh, yeah. you know, that's a pretty scary, you know? I mean, I... Uh, I look very nice and sweet, you know, but I have mass conjunct my sun sign. You know, so, you know, yep. it, it can get very scary. So, <laughs> Especially uh, if there's a, an entity fucking with you. Can I just ask, for those, for those people, I'm very aware of, um, there's sometimes when I first discovered spirituality and when I first went through my awakening, there was loads of uh, like terminology that I just had no clue about. So can we just clarify for people what we're referring to when we talk about entities what are some of the things that they include well i mean very common uh, ghosts you know mm-hmm. discarnate human beings that well didn't make it you know didn't make it didn't want to go into the light you know maybe felt guilty you know so-called sinners or they were attached to their lovers or their family and they had thought they have to take care of the grandkids you know or they, you know, wanted to look after their factories or their one revenge. You know, maybe you killed them or some betrayed them. You know? um, so those they can attack. You know, if you, um, you know, let's say, this many clients first time. <laughs> you know, there are always always problems. There's you know always some cacamania going on with the internet misunderstanding. You know, yeah. or just suddenly start feeling bad. You know, finding all kinds of excuses. You know, they're generally being manipulated. You know, by beings that don't have their best in mind. So there are yeah. ghosts. Then there are kind of dumber things like um, archons. You know, they're kind of like rats, astral rats. Of course, they don't look like them. They're have more like this octopus. You know? Okay, they, yeah. They attach to the sides of the head. I've you know, come across those and, before. Yeah, you know, <laughs> um, some of them gets placed, you know, some of them, you know, they're, you know, as a freelance predator, <laughs> say wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. Um, yeah, those, um, you know, sometimes little gremlins or other beings, um, depending. Uh and well, uh, then when you go up the chain, you know, that's um, so pretty much, you know, all the light workers, you know, they get harassed by the uh, reptilians, 
I would say. You know, yeah. this is part of spiritual warfare. You know, those that are incarnated here, you know, the um, dark side, you know, knows exactly who they are. You know? And I mean, not just through technology, also through psychic perception. You know, there's technology yes. there, and, you know, they are, they are trained in how to do that. And then, you know, they start harassing and trying to cut you down, you know, from the very beginning. You know, whether it's scary dreams or, you know, getting abused sexually, you know, or, you know, other things. Um, you know, the shamanic wounding, so to say, you know, gets provided yep. by the dark side. And, uh, and then those beings, um, you know, they are on the higher planes. You know, and those you don't fight yourself, those you call on your big brothers, so to say, you know, source, you know, Jesus, you know, Archangel Michael, you know, the warriors, Kali, Goddess Durga, Mother Mary. The, the big you know? guns, calling, bringing in the big guns for those yeah, guys. Yeah, Lord Shiva, you know, Lord Ganesh, you know, they wipe the floor with them. Yeah. But yep. you got to ask them. They can't just, you know, go and scuttle along with you all the time. You know, you got to ask, you know, you ultimately, you know, you got to learn how to fight it yourself. You know, if you got enough chi and you know your pedigree, you know, <laughs> if those guys are from the fifth dimension and you go to your seventh dimension level, you know, you can kick their butts. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's obviously good and important. One of the things you said, um, I'm just going to pick up on some of the things because you said a lot, a lot, uh, in that i want to go back to so you said about um like ghost attachments and entities and stuff they can really affect someone i don't i think that a lot of people don't understand uh, a lot of the effect that say an attachment or something can have so for example say you've got a ghost attachment for a part from a past life in your solar plexus and it's literally affecting your appetite or your appetite, or it's making you crave certain things. It might make you be your reason for eating sugar all the time could be because you have a ghost attachment from a past life that ate a lot of sugar or something that's blocking your ability to absorb nutrients or very, very physical things that happen in our physical reality that can't be approached by um, taking medicine or seeing a doctor. It might kind of cover it up, oh, yeah. but the, the root cause of it is an entity attachment, which is, is why so many people stay sick, why so many people struggle to find the answers of, I don't know, mental health problems, physical health problems, because they're kind of looking in the wrong place. Um, because not many people think to go, oh, I'm just going to close my eyes and see if I have an entity attachment. I know a lot more people are uh, kind of waking up to this sort of work now, but it can mean that a whole nation ends up staying sick because it's just riddled with crap <laughs> energetic crap stuck to them <laughs> absolutely i mean um i even i mean you know it happens to myself too so i can completely attest to this um yeah so <laughs> once in traffic you know around the hospital <laughs> you know i really got angry you know screaming i screamed in my car you know i mean <laughs> not at anybody just ah. i scream you know. in my car a lot <laughs> yeah right so i mean i really was angry you know and then suddenly you know after that i had knee pains you know it, it took me about a week you know to get to that oh uh, i might have a ghost you know and yeah, yeah. It, you know it was a ghost that you know was old and had bum knee <laughs> you know and so the you know um so uh, some of those miraculous healings you know it's just you know the ghost just leaves the body and you know the physical body you know uh, adjusts really fast you know yeah. the, the physical body is held in space you know by your astral body and your astral body works in a way like like a magnet you know holds this magnetic field that the ion findings go into so the subtle body kind of holds the space you know and draws the atoms kind of into the proper alignment so cool yeah. i love that I learn so much every time I speak to you. You just have a really good way of explaining everything that makes it make sense. And I love also that people who are listening to this, um, who are light workers, who are kind of more connected with themselves or whatever, even though some of the stuff that you are talking about is quite far out or whatever, there will be just like there was within me, a deep recognition and a deep yes feeling that, okay, yeah, this is, this is right. This is real. And, and maybe I have some of those things as well. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, I don't even argue with people about this. You know, I don't want to waste my time on this. You know, it's like, <clears throat> you know, it, you will know by the results. You know, you can feel it. You know, most people yeah. feel when the ghosts are leaving. You know, I mean, they can feel it. And, you know, the results stay. You know, yeah. it, it doesn't slip back. You know? Permanent. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, the results are permanent. So, you know, besides physical symptoms, you know, there are also psychological issues. You know, for instance, you have, if you have an old lover following you from a past lifetime, you know, I mean, <clears throat> um, so you know, let's say this, let's say, uh, you know, there is this man following you around madly in love with you, you know, really jealous. What do you think? How, you know, he feels about when you have no boyfriend. You know? I'm going to make sure I push him away. Yeah, you know, he's going to try to manipulate your thoughts telepathically, you know, and you may even think these are your thoughts. Yeah. And all the thoughts of your boyfriend, you know, or his emotion or your emotion, you know, or other yeah. people's or situation, make you forget a date, you know, make you say something blunderous, you know, whatever it is, try to screw it up. And you really can't tell it. It, it really does feel like as, as someone who's had a lot of entities and attachments removed, removed over the couple, last couple of years, it really does just feel like your thoughts it, or your personality trait or something that is a pattern that you can't fix or whatever and you have this this ghost attachment removed and you're like fuck that was them that's why I thought like that for all those years and it literally goes you don't need years of therapy or do you know what I mean I mean this is a so there might be things you need years of therapy for but this is for for this sort of stuff it, it's amazing how quickly something can change like bam that you've wanted to get rid of your whole life or it's worried you or plagued you your whole life And it and it goes with the entity. It goes with the ghost and and doesn't come back again because it was it's not you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even if it's a dear and granny, you know, that's trying to take care of you, you know, very well meaning. Uh, first of all, it's granny with her old fashioned ideas. You know, she is not enlightened. You know, um, maybe she has a little bit more, you know, uh, aspect of reality because she's beyond time a little bit more, but it's still old granny, you know, with her old, you know, old fashioned ideas. Second, she has to suck your life force. You know, she has to kind of, you know, supply herself with chi. So a uh, lot of people are very you know, exhausted all the time. <laughs> You know, even while having good diet, even while exercising, and oh, some of them have a whole entourage of ghosts just sitting on them, sucking on them. Some of yeah. them are hitchhikers. They're just, hmm, there's somebody with a lot of life, you know, mm -hmm. let's go there and feel good. And, and, you know, some of them are more karmic, you know, enemies, you know, lovers. <laughs> People you've killed in past lives, whoopsie doodle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I think we've both had a few of them come up in sessions. Um, I had a um, talking about things kind of piggybacking and just jumping into. I've had this happen a fair bit during the work that I do, but also out and about. I recently had one where um, it was in a session with you. I had that my face all put bunched up at the side, and I was like, "Oh, there's a spirit in me that face is all fat, and it's and it's trying to get through." And it. it it came through with the message that I picked it up in the supermarket because I didn't put any energy protection on before I went to the supermarket. By the way, guys, supermarkets are massive uh, containers for ghosts and entities and attachments because the amount of people that go in and out of there and all the food coming from different places, all the transportation, all of that, it just holds it. So wear your crystals when you go to supermarkets. Call an Archangel Michael before you go in the door and ask that nothing gets attached to you. Um, but again, when you when you do this sort of work, when you're a light worker, when you've got a big old bright light, light in there, unfortunately, things do just fucking jump on. And I think it's really important as just everyone puts it into their self-care of doing a little scan every now and again, seeing whether you've got any spirits that need to ascend or seeing if you've got some attachments, some energy that doesn't belong to you. It should be a, a non-negotiable part of self-care, especially when you're doing any sort of spiritual work. Ask your pendulum, you know, this is very simple. You know, ask a pendulum, do a prayer that you get the truth and then just ask the pendulum, you know, is an entity attached to me or not, you know? That's and good. that's, uh, that's good one. one way of, of, of going in. You know, I have a video on it, you know, also how to release entities just to yeah. check, you know, tools for ascension and ghosts and you will find it. 
Mm. What are some of the things that people could do um, to sort of protect themselves on a day, um, both on a daily basis and people listening to this that also might be doing healing work, massage? Um, what, are, what are a couple of easy things that they can do to protect their energy going in? Well, so this massage, you know, um, as I said, I like, you know, to clear my clients, you know, um, before with a conch, and then I clear them also with a wand. So I'm just swiping chi um, through them. Um, yeah, so let's say uh, if you don't have a wand, you know, you could use a crystal, like, you know, a Danberite, you know, or, you know, a slight smoky in anything. With Selenite as well. Selenite is fine, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's, it's will do, you know, it's very cheap in, you know, quite a packs quite a punch you, know? you can get a, you can get a big old bit for cheap that's why i like it because you can get such a big wedge of it <laughs> yeah 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 uh, personally i prefer where's my tourmaline here that is weird. tourmaline oh, yeah. did you say now that outperforms Wow. You know, a selenite like one to three hours. So those say. of you listening that can't can't see what we're <laughs> what we're seeing at the moment, he has got a big old wedge of tourmaline in his hand. <laughs> yeah. About this would be about face. four four pound, five pounds of tourmaline here. Wow. Uh-huh. Yeah, so you know, this they really suck it out, you know, out of you. And so clear, uh, clearing the client, clearing your client before you before you do any work. Um, yeah. and is there any sort of I know you've done a lot of things like uh, defense for psychic attack and stuff like that. Okay. Now, next thing is, you know, um, you do, you probably want to have some kind of a hammer type, you know, some iron or magnetite, you know, in your shoes, in your socks. Okay. You know, do you want to stay grounded like anything? If you're not grounded, um, you know, you're not going to sew anything that you pick up out. You know, even if you're a complete idiot, you know, but if your feet are open, you know, it's just going to just flow out. You know, the dark chi, you know, always sinks down. And okay. if you're grounded, it just goes into the earth and sewers out. You know, if you're not, if it's just blocked, yeah, it's going to stay inside. You know, and then I need to start control. doing that. I, I didn't know about the hematite in the socks. I'm going to start putting them in my socks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So for new clients, you know, that I have, of course, I, you know, this is all over the internet nowadays. You know, I have a special, uh, you know, necklace, you know, with hematite and other stuff on there, you know, and I yeah. put also, I use obsidian. You know, I have obsidian in my in my uh, pan pockets and uh, oh yeah, and uh, there is this scrambler kyanite. You know, black kyanite is wonderful. You know, yeah, it, it's a scrambler. You do, it protects you also from um, let's say ceremonial magic. Okay, you know, it, it's yeah. uh, quite helpful there. Um, so this is to uh, you know, this is to ground out the dark stuff. Um, also, uh, what's this? Shungite is also very nice. Mm -hmm. I got, I bought myself a shungite pendant the other day for um, all the channeling that I'm doing. Right. Yeah. You know, it's also for electronics. You know, there's a lot of electronic pollutions. You know, that really helps. Also, you can the stick water. them to the back of your phone and your computer, can't you? The shungite. You can get them on stickers that you can stick. Yeah. Them things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have, <laughs> se I have several stickers. You know, I mean. Uh, and, uh, you know, everybody should watch, you know, videos on cell phone radiation, you know, how it, you know, affects cell mitosis, etc. cetera. Okay. You, know, you should know <laughs> how yeah. it affects you, you know, if you don't know yet. Um, then I'm probably of guilty of not knowing enough about that. I should probably do some research on that myself. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's about effectiveness, you know, um, yeah. least amount of effort, you know, for maximum benefit. Mm -hmm. Sounds so good. you don't want to put all your, you know, all your energy into nutrition and then just completely, you know, bum out on some other aspects, you know, uh, that's, mm -hmm. um, I like to have then when also, um, you know, um, have like anything pink, you know, rose quartz, so your heart chakra is open and then it supports it. Personally, yeah. I like phenakite, you know, it's really high vibration. And so, um, so many times when I know it's going to be heavy duty, you know, I'm wearing these kind of military or, you know, hitchhiker, you know, hiker shirts, you know, where yeah. I can 
put um, you know stuff into the with all the, pockets. the pockets. <laughs> yeah, you know, Brilliant. ladies can you know load their bases. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I have I have lumps in my bra all the time. There's always a crystal down there. Yeah, it's like the client goes like, hmm, and you say, I'm up here. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I tell clients frequently to put crystals, put stick a crystal in your bra, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, so, you know, so this kind of helps. Um, then, of course, uh, you know, doing smudge, you know, helps. Uh, but of course, you have to have your window open, you know, so the um, things go out, you know, um, rattles, Escape. you know, rattles that break up, you know, also below the you know, around the person, you know, um, quite effective, you know, try it on yourself, you know, when you rattle, but, um, okay, so this is, uh, what else? Yeah, so then, you know, being grounded, and then, of course, um, really pumping up your force field. I mean, if you give massage or do any reading, and you're not cheated up, <laughs> you know, yep. you know. So getting you know, your own energy up first before you, before yeah. you go and anywhere near anyone else. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, you're not going to be a good channeler. You're not going to be a good psychic, first of all. Nope. <laughs> you know, you're just going to work off memory of cards or whatever, you know. It's not going to yeah. be anything, you know, special, you know. So, yeah. you know, a it good makes your feeling. connection a lot, a lot stronger, doesn't it? The, the grounding your energy and then connecting versus just trying to go straight up there. It makes your psychic connection so much stronger. Yeah, otherwise you're just a space case. Yeah. You know, space guy did like, ah, yeah, you know, dizzy and we, headaches and confusion and not bringing through anything clear, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, no power, also, no power. Yeah, and it will, yeah. and it'll drain you. It's, it's going to drain you faster as well, your own energy, if you're not uh, fully connected. And when I, again, when I first started doing all of this and before I le was learning off you and other people, I would, my energy would drain out so fast because I wasn't using all of the crystals and the protection and uh, connecting myself properly. I was just getting so excited that I found a new toy and, oh my God, I can heal people and I can do this and <laughs> I can get messages from things and fucking hell, the amount of attachments and illnesses and burnouts and I learned the hard way. So, <laughs> Yeah. So you have to, you know, develop some stamina and really good habits. You know, I mean, uh, if you burned out after one session, <laughs> you know, that's hard yeah. to make a full time living with this. You know? <laughs> so I, I've been doing this really intense session for six hours a day. You know? Yes, yeah, it's, cra it's crazy how, so, how many clients you see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, I don't charge that much. You know, I rather, you know, work, you know, with a lot of clients and help them over the yep. hump. You know, I mean, yep. you know, your many... energy will have built up as well for, again, for people who are listening, who have just started doing this work. Um, even with all the tapping in and everything, your body still needs to get used to working with those vibrations those frequencies and wolfgang's obviously been doing it for 40 years and can like there's no way i've been doing it for two years and there is no way i would be able to do three sessions a day like wolfgang did because i would be a raisin <laughs> I would, honestly i i mean i can't even comprehend but that's because my like i'm still rapidly shifting my body needs to get used to all of this my brain needs to get used to it my energy needs to get used to it so um if you are at the beginning and even if you're doing all the connecting and protection and everything and you're still finding that you are getting a bit tired uh, just be patient with your ascension process because i mean wolfgang's had <laughs> for a long time to get to where he is <laughs> well i mean you know also do you have to be in really good shape you know if you want to do this you know to, um, like you know to be, have a high vibrational mind you have to have a vibrational body if you yeah. you know full of toxins uh, it's going to keep you down you know it's going to lay off the binge drinking yeah whatever it is you know whatever <laughs> yep. you know whatever is your favorite poison you know i mean you know where you are where everybody is out of balance you know but yeah. you have to be in good shape so you can handle this much cheap you know this much life force yeah. you know if you if you're feeble <laughs> Feeble. And somebody, yeah, if you have feeble health, yeah. you know, and somebody's like um, dumping a lot of stuff, you know, you're going to be sick for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I mean, sometimes uh, you're going to get heavy clients with a lot of shit. 
<laughs> yeah, heavily depressed, going through a divorce, you know, and getting losing their job at the same time, you know. I mean, the blues yep. songs that I'm hearing, you know, um, it's just like I'm going from one trauma to another, you know. I mean, if there wouldn't be that much love that comes through, you know, this would be a horrible thing. But, you know, I have just tremendous love there that also counteracts all this, you know. Yeah, which is really important. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, really important, you know, and keep, keeping the smiling up, you know, as soon as you start frowning, uh, you can, you absorb a negative energy, you know, no question about it, you know, so you have to, you know, keep smiling, you know, otherwise the low vibration, you know, get to you. I love that, the, one of my most favorite things that you taught me about the smiling brick, bringing, oh, yeah. if the corners of your mouth is going up, your energy is going up, if the corners of your mouth is going down, your energy is going down, you can literally think of it as, as like a funnel or a fountain going one way, one way or another. And it really does work. You can sit there, close your eyes, smile, see how you feel, frown, see how you feel. You can literally do that right now um, and have a proven experience yourself <laughs> that, it is, mm -hmm. that, it will, that it will move your energy up and down. Um, so I want to go back again. So as we were talking about like kind of the, the entities and everything, I want to go a little bit and talk a little bit about astral attachments because let again, me just, sorry, let yeah. me just stop you here. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, I don't want to, okay, now, you know, the people think this is good. No, the other thing is, you know, prayer of protection. Yes. Yeah. Super important. You know, I mean, uh, very, very important, you know, especially, you know, anytime you go into the public, you know, anytime you deal with the client, definitely prayer of protection and guidance. Absolutely. You know, and afterwards, uh, I would say, you know, if you can take a shower, you know, after a work day, definitely take a shower just for the energetic cleansing. Okay. You know? Yeah. Um, possible, you know, I would say full time healers should also take a lot of bath, you know, with Epsom salts, you know, it's just a reset. You know, um, I don't I get cranky when I don't take a bath, you know, twice a week. Yeah, you know, I have to, I have so many, especially the, when I'm having more clients and especially when the energy is not even just with clients, when you're energy sensitive, you pick shit up from everywhere. At the moment, the energy, at the moment of recording this, the energy has been really heavy just in the atmosphere this week. I've been having Epsom salt baths every day, like, <laughs> come on, get it mm -hmm. out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, or, I mean, also, yeah, I strongly advise, you know, to start practicing something like Kundalini yoga and Qigong. You know, I mean, Hatha yoga, yeah, it's good for you, but it doesn't cut it that much, you know, <laughs> uh, that, that, you know, uh, you know, with Hatha yoga, you know, when you detox your body and stretch out, yeah, you can run more chi, you know, but then you got to really, you know, work on moving chi, you know, that's where Qigong or Kundalini yoga, you know, and okay. do it smiling. I mean, smile when you do this, you know, otherwise it's just power, you know, that can get to your head, you know, turn it into the love. You know, otherwise, again, you're wasting your time, wasting your time and just get proud and stuff like that. A big, big waste of time. <laughs> we don't and want pride, we fights. want smiles. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you mentioned about uh, like calling out prayer, like prayer protections. Could you give us uh, an example of like a couple of um, protection prayers that you might say yourself so that people know the sort of things that they can say when they're going out and about or doing sessions? Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, what we always do. So this is, you know, I ask that everything that happens in this session is going to be for the highest good, in divine harmony, with the most benevolent outcomes, you know, because, yeah. uh, you know, you know, there's all those genie stories, you know, <laughs> you get three wishes, you mean the best, and everything backfires, you know, everything goes sideways. That's why highest good and divine harmony, most benevolent outcomes, you know, then Love we that. also... Yeah, that we that there are no inappropriate energies, you know, are being you know attached or exchanged on courts, right? You yeah. know, I don't want you know, um, let's say sexually molested by somebody, or you know, I don't want a, uh, the other person feeling that they're sexually molested, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, by somebody. This happens, you know, with healers, you know, people let them in, and then suddenly, <laughs> you know, um, weird things start to happen. You know, yep. um, some kind of magician is trying to vampire you. So, you know, this is very important. I, you know, I had black magicians, you know, trying to suck me. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sure, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, there's, there's, so, bringing that on to um, like talking about things like trying to suck you and putting cords and whatever, 
can you explain a little bit about that so many people do talk about cords and do cord removal meditations and uh and but without really knowing what they are or how they can come about and what they do so what what are energy cords and what do they do to people <laughs> mm -hmm. well um as far as i can tell by now it's like there are two types of cords you okay. know um some of them are like let's say transcendental of a positive nature and they look more you know they're like connection from chakra to chakra between people Mm -hmm. And those, they kind of look like rain noodles. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. You know? And then yeah. uh, that's how people, most people describe them. And then yeah. there are others, you know, through which the lower stuff kind of gets through, you know, the anger and negative thoughts and lust and things like that. And that looks like, I mean, we all seen string cheese, you know, mozzarella string cheese when it pulls. You know, yeah. and, but it's kind of dark and blackish, you know, darkish, blackish, brownish, you know. So this is like, you know, okay, like it's, uh, you know, I'm in love with Lisa and, you know, maybe we had something together, you know, and so broke up, you know, and there is still this connection. So whenever you have a strong emotional engagement with somebody, you know, courts are being formed, you yeah. know, especially through sexuality. You know, I mean, that's quite a, hopefully a good high, you know, but that creates a bonding, you know, that is here an attachment. And then, uh, you know, you have a more telepathic contact with them, you know, so your sadness of the breakup, you know, goes to her, suddenly she feels depressed, you know, or whenever, you know, um, somebody is pleasuring themselves, you know, thinking of the other person, you know, their life forces, you know, getting drained. Yeah. You know, so this, you know, is a big problem for beautiful women. You know, um, you know, there are uh, many sometimes ex-lovers, you know, that just, you know, that was the best thing that ever happened to them. <laughs> just <laughs> draining just your sexual energy. Draining their sexual energy, thinking yeah. about them, you know. And um, this couldn't even be, you know, they were very distant admirers, you know. And so, you know, uh, to be a real lady, you know, you have to know, you know, how to disconnect that, you know can't just you know behave like a wallflower you know not to get attention well there are people that are doing this yeah you know, but it's not much fun no no definitely not so if you if say for example um i was like did a meditation and and felt that i had a cord between me and someone else what would i then um do is there something that people can do themselves to to, to ask it to leave to remove it well, okay so, you know, initially, you know, you have to ask your helpers, you know, your spirit guides, you know, and maybe certain angels that you trust or other beings that you have a relationship with, you know, depending on to your spiritual background. Yeah. You know? And um, so, but then uh, most of the time, you know, there's a certain lesson behind, you know, it's not like, hey, remove this and nothing has been learned. You know, okay. so they definitely want you to find out, you know, from whom is it? You know, yeah. so ask, you know, who is sucking me here, you know, and how did this happen? You know, mm -hmm. um, why did this happen? So you now cause an effect so you can learn from it. You know, yeah. Once you have the aha moment, uh, this is how this happened. You know, I'm probably not going to repeat this here. Then, you know, yeah, they're gladly probably going to move this, you know. Okay. And, um, yeah, you make sure that you don't bullshit yourself. You know, I mean, of course, you have to do this when you're in higher consciousness. You know, um, you know, okay. you try to see Keep, it get your or you will first. feel it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's why, you know, use one of my meditations, you know, to get you there. You know, and then yeah. you can either stop it and then take it over. With you. Once you're in high, touch with your high self, you, know, you can take it from there. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of meditations on Wolfgang's channel, uh, Tools for Ascension. I, I use them all the time. Um, ones for cord removal, attachment removal, uh, all sorts of clearings, ghost clearings. They're really, really powerful. Um, sometimes you do need like a one to one session with a practitioner to get into the, the specifics of it and help you remove the really dark stuff. But just as like a general maintenance, they can be they can be really, really good, um, especially if you're not confident doing this stuff by yourself yet. And you want to make sure that you're getting it all, that you're clearing it safely. Yeah, I would say, you know, and, you know, it's the first time to have, you know, somebody do it with you or for you, you know? Yeah. Uh, then once you know how it feels like, 
you know, you know, people can do this for themselves. I had clients after one or two sessions, you know, they were liberated whole graveyards. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Heavy duty, you know, just warrior woman, you know, going right for it. You know, I mean, yeah. this, this happens, you know, and then did I do everything right? Yeah. <laughs> Not so. Yeah, yeah. Just, it's good to know. pass this knowledge on. So um, something else, so obviously we've talked about chords between people. I would love also to ask about chords don't always come from humans, do they? <laughs> chords and attachments. Uh, yeah. So, um <laughs> Chords also, uh, you know, the other most significant chords that I know about come from weapons, the mystical weapons, you know. So it's not just, you know, you are, have been stabbed with a sword. No, the sword was enchanted, you know, in a certain way. And so it becomes more like a harpoon, you know. First of all, it deposits a lot of darkness or poisons into your body, you know, and the darkness creates a portal if it has a certain amount. And also like a cord, you know, to the originator. And so they can manipulate it and affect you through this. Um, and would these be um would these be like physical weapons in past lives or like astral weapons from entities? Well, <laughs> that uh, depends, you know. I mean, they definitely have been uh, physical weapons, you know, enchanted like this, you know, by humans. Mm -hmm. And you know, even with the, as gladiators, you know, we used to do this. You know, and you do every trick in the book, you know, and to, to, you know, make sure you survive and win the fight. Yeah. And uh, I used to be a gladiator trainer in the past. Like, and a gladiator. Amazing. That doesn't surprise <laughs> me at all. <laughs> a lot of trauma, I tell you. You know, everybody dies. Yeah, everybody dies. Yeah. So, uh, oh, we, okay, so we were talking about... Uh, uh, yeah, the mystical ast weapons, astral, 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 well. astral weapons, mm -hmm. huh? and then of course there are also astral devices, you know, that you do not see. You know, they work the same way, and they have been used many times. I mean, many curses even work like this. Many implants mm, done by humans, but then also reptilians are for the Let's say the, and this is of course very controversial, but in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, a lot of clients of mine have been involved in this. A lot of, most of them have been wounded, you yeah. know, with mystical weapons and corded, you know. And uh, so the information I got, and this is news for everybody, you know, this is completely news. And I know how controversial this is. Uh, that, the, that, you know, the Alpha Dacunians, you know, they didn't even want to win that battle. They just wanted, you know, having high dimension souls getting entangled in karma, you know. <laughs> Killing, you know, other high dimensional souls. Well, you're going to get know? a lot more long term darkness to feed off from that than just killing everyone, P right? Plus, they had everybody plugged, or they had plenty of plugged, and then they could contaminate them. You know, it's like I bug your yeah. phone or put spyware on your computer, you know, and then I can mess with your life and you don't even know what's going on. That was the cause and reason. And so, you know, those clients, you know, once we remove those, you know, I mean, they just have been ailing and ailing with these things, you know. So yeah. very, very important. But this is high level stuff. You know, this yeah. is, you don't start out with this. You know, this is for the healers. And, you know, part of my mission is to, you know, wake up and rescue those trapped yeah, the mental beings that are trapped. Part of the you know? stuff that when I when I that I had no clue about, and then I had that first session with you and came across the um the what the Anunnaki did to me in a past life with giving me power and then cording me, kind of using me like a battery. And then months later I did a channeling with the Arcturians and they told me about the illegal light worker experiment in ancient Egypt with the Anunnaki. And since then I've had so many clients that have um, some sort of plug in their channel or a, an implant that's blocking their energy, stealing their energy or controlling them like some sort of puppeteering. And yeah. I ask, okay, is this part of the Anunnaki Lightworker experiment? I get a yes. And I'm still, this, this stuff, you must come across it as well all the time. Um, and it's stuff that happens and it affects thousands of people and specifically affects lightworkers, preventing psychics from opening their channel, preventing healers 
from accessing their healing abilities within this life. Um, and it, again, it is far out there stuff, but it's stuff that people who people who especially feel the call in this lifetime to be a healer, to be a light worker, to be a psychic, to help. And they feel like they've got big blocks or massive fear around it. It's generally going to be because of attachments and past life trauma, which is all of the stuff that Wolfgang works with. It's a lot of the stuff that I work with that I've learned off Wolfgang as well. Um, and it doesn't seem to be ever talked about on on spiritual channels. You know, the more out the more out there stuff, people it becomes taboo. People, it seems so far out there that people don't want to talk about it in case people think they're fucking nuts. And a lot of people probably don't want to scare people. That, that's why I didn't talk about it um, openly for at least a year <laughs> when I was doing all of this work. I'd save it for the for the session because I didn't want to scare people away. <laughs> yeah. So first of all, you know. Um... There's no reason to be scared because it has already happened. Yeah, 100%. You know, it's, it's not going to get worse. You know, it's just, you just. Nothing's going to get you. <laughs> you know, it's like you're finding out, you know, your grandson has been skimming the money off you. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, it has happened. You know, so you're not broke yet. You know, every life is still going to go on. A good analogy. That's it. That's it. Something skimming your energy, just like yeah. your grand, mm -hmm. your grandson skimming your purse. Yeah. And so to give you an idea, you know, so everybody knows this scene from Matrix, you know, where he kind of becomes aware, this pot, you know, with all those plugins into the back of his head and spine. Well, this is actually happening on the astral plane. Yeah. You know, that uh, many uh, light body aspects, you know, have been trapped like this, you know, and they're being harvested um, for luge, you know, for life force, you know, and they don't like the love stuff, you know, they hate that, you know, they love the pain stuff, the fear, you mm -hmm. know? and to really get it going, you know, they love that. You know? uh, it's yeah. a kick, it's like Coke for them. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's, and so ultimately, you know, my job is to, you know, clear, you know, um, those aspects from Atlantis, you know, from the past worlds, you know, those really powerful ones. You know, yeah. When we came down here into this planet, you know, seeding the race, you know, being involved in this, you know, as pharaohs or as, you know, leaders of certain cultures, you know, these are all experiments in a way. You know, all have been ma manipulated, sabotaged, <laughs> you know, humans being used as proxy. You know, the Greek had that pretty much right, you know, yeah. with, with his, uh, the Greek gods. You know, actually, I had um, clients, you know, transported into the Olympus. Wow. And this is like, you know, they're like, I'm seeing like columns and these huge beings that yeah. gorgeous. Uh, we've know? done, we did, you with, did with one with me where I was, I was with Aphrodite, wasn't I? I was in fully, yeah. yep in the, the columns and everything, and you were asking me if I, I worked But they were the gods. Me. This wasn't just one, Darshan. This yep. were like a whole... And they're like, what is he doing here? He's not supposed to be here. And then he was back. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so, yeah, no. So, you know, these uh, beings exist, you know, and they're definitely, you know, bickering with each other. You know, higher tech and higher consciousness doesn't mean, you know, there's no competition and fighting and duality and stuff like this. Yeah, and they're using humans as proxies. You know, I mean, uh, definitely, this is still going on. They're just not appearing in physical form right now. Yep, hundred percent. I mean, look at all the stuff that's going on in the world right now. There's, if um, the on the astral plane, the big fart, but fart, the big fart, the big fight between dark and light, and the vibrational war going on. And then look at what's going on in our everyday reality. The division the infighting the mass fear by the media um all of these things out there that are literally designed to keep us in a low vibration like that's got to come from somewhere right <laughs> yeah of course you know this is the big picture you know vibrational warfare yeah you know vibrational warfare you know high vibration versus low vibration you know the higher your vibration is you know the more positive is your reality you know, it's like a bubble you carry around you, the reality. It's like a bubble. You know, anything that gets pulled into the bubble uh, gets into the higher vibration. So if you're powerful, you know, the birds yeah. start reacting differently. You know, they're reacting, you know, they're reacting on a higher dimensional consciousness. You know, yeah. I mean, I have this, I see this so many times um, when I work with clients, you know, when I get into the love vibration, the birds are on and they're going like, 
you know, they get really sweet. You know, and this can be like, you know, 50 yards away, you know. Um, in, in like Australia. a Disney movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. This is like, you know, kind of tacky sometimes, you know. But it's, um, I love you know. it. I love it. So would you would you agree that um on the on the bigger picture stuff, I mean um people who are listening who are familiar with the channeling and stuff of doing the working with the Arcturians and the Rurians, they talk a lot about the lightening, the process of literally lightening up the world, like increasing the vibrations. Would you agree that the most important thing that anyone can do, regardless of whether you're a helix, psychic, whatever, is keep your own energy? bright is look after yourself is is keep your own energy in a in a love vibration yeah i mean <clears throat> so you have to confront the darkness you know that is in there mm -hmm. you know i mean you have to look you know for the rats under the carpet you know ignoring the rats under the carpet is not a good idea no this is very true <laughs> right so you got to work you know if you have been abused you know uh, you know, do forgiveness work or whatever, you know, check on your progress, you know, check with the pendulum, you know, how clear you have become, you know, the Dianetics, you know, Scientology is pretty correct in that point, you know, that you have to clear all your trauma, you know, Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, this is, um, yeah, you know, check with the pendulum, you know, see where you have most of your trauma, I would say, you know, the more you dump, your trauma you know the more you have space you know for you know your higher higher then right. the lemurian yeah. said uh i think it was yesterday i was doing some channeled writing a little quote that was just brilliant which was the more dark you move through the more light you move to it finished off their energy update for the month i was like i need to get that on a t-shirt but it is it is it is true the more you can go through dark nights of the soul working through all your shadow work clearing through all your past trauma and it feels like shit <laughs> it doesn't it's not fun uh, there's a lot of crying and a lot of uh, nasty feelings but then when you come out the other side you you do feel brighter than you've ever been you can feel that things have lifted you can feel that things are getting better ready to uh, go back down and clear your next layer <laughs> Okay, so now let's make this, you know, many light workers have to get very abstract about this, you know. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, we got to, you know, confront the dark side. Well, how the hell is this going to look like? You know, you're going to be bar diving, you know, or, <laughs> you know, dropping roofies at the Greyhound bus station, you know, so how are we going to confront, you know, I love it. <laughs> your dark yeah, side? Yeah, let's, let's, let's have some how to nitty gritty. <laughs> <laughs> So let's say, you know, I mean, for instance, you know, first thing is to check in with your inner child, you know, see how those little, you know, kids got traumatized, mm -hmm. you know, and run so much love and dialogue with them, you know, maybe with the advice of high self, you know, till they're fine, you know, blow up their crown tracker, make sure they're grounded, you know, and then they stay like this, you know, then do the same thing with your inner teen, you know. If, if the inner teen got traumatized, you know, in the schoolyard or got rejected, you know, in, in amorous thing, you know, yeah, just talk them through it, you know, till they're yep. all smiley and, and processed. You know? And you can do you do all this in in meditation, right? So, getting your getting your chi up first, guiding yourself in, and then and then going to kind of communicate with these aspects of yourself. Yeah. So I have videos in it. I do it with my clients. I make sure, you know, they learn how to, you know, communicate in thought as well as with love, you know, with their yeah. inner child and high self. You know, this is generally the first session unless they're really screwed up. You know, um, you know, heart opening, you know, and learning how to do it, you know, is, you know, basic bread and butter. You know, without that, I'm not going to take anybody any deeper. You know, love yeah. is that morphine, you know, otherwise you cannot go into the underworld. This is the underworld, you know, confronting this. You know? And so once, you know, your inner child and your inner teen, you know, are okay, then maybe, you know, yeah, depending on how old you are, you know, work the other places too. Maybe the divorce or when your mom died, you know, wherever. And um, then, of course, there is past life trauma. So for past life trauma, um, well, some people have visions of this, you know, and, you know, there are meditations for this, but I would suggest, you know, to take a session first, 
You know, once yeah. you have been under the guidance of somebody else, you know, Jesus let go, they guide you, you know, you have very high chances of succeeding. There. Even as well, even if you are, I mean, I'm highly psychic and I'm easy to drop into past lives, but it is so, I much prefer having like Wolfgang or any of the other practitioners. I see someone holding space, someone helping me with energy and guiding me through. It's a lot more effective um, and I'm able to go a lot deeper and clear the really nasty shit that I don't want to look at um, rather than doing it myself. So even if you're highly psychic, even if you've been doing this stuff for ages, um, it can still be really important to just have someone else holding that space and guiding you to help you get to the deeper layers. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, for instance, you know, uh, let's say a person, you know, lacks power. You know, everything kind of goes sideways, you know, has great idea, nothing manifests, you know. So let's say if you asked high self, well, you know, where does this lack of power coming from? You know, show us the most important one. Okay, so then, you know, um, let's go to this lifetime, you know, was this male, female, let's say, was the female incarnation, you know, was this yourself or somebody else? Well, it was yourself, you know, so then what happened, you know? Uh, well, uh, was there premature death? Yes or no? Well, premature, you know, and so what happened? Um, was it uh, violent? Yep. You know, um, was it stabbing, choking? Well, stabby, stabby. And, well, you know, was it sacrificed? Yeah. You know, for whose benefit? You know, we find out. And yeah. then, you know, liberate this thing. You know, call in divine angels and whatever. You know, get the ones punished. You know, get them liberated. Everybody else that they also took as hostage, whatever. You get them liberated. <laughs> it's a whole big, it's a, pro, it's a process, man, this, this work. It's a... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not doing only for my client. You know, when I, you know, find a nest, I take the whole nest out. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the service I do, you know, and that's, I get a lot of support. You know, from yeah. the higher ups. You know, uh, that's always that. a question. I'm, I'm, I'm scared to ask on a day that I've, if a day, a day that I'm feeling low energy and I'm, I'm having a client and something comes up and I'm like, ah, shit. What? How many people are affected? And you get like two thousand. And I'm like, okay, just give me five minutes. I'm gonna have to go off script. <laughs> yeah, because you can't. It is is important that you do this work. They're doing a lot of work for the collective, and and of course, it's if it's happened to someone in front of you, it might have been as uh, part of a larger thing. It might have happened to loads of people all at once. And if, it's great if you can go in and and clear that uh, with the help of your spirit guides and higher <laughs> higher beings not just yourself <laughs> yeah i'm not the one you know doing all the nitty-gritty work you know i pass yeah. this on to the arcturians you know they do a really great job i haven't had any complaints so far um you know they're very very expert and i mean uh, sometimes, you know, um, let's say if you know, find out you know, kings or generals, you know, military people or even scientists, sometimes thousands and thousands of people, you know, have been, you know, affected by this and they're still stuck. Yeah. You know, uh, I have had sometimes whole races get wiped out, you know, I mean, so that is huge. And I mean, this is nothing, you know, <laughs> you don't want to do personally. <laughs> You know, it's just like I'm a contractor. Well, please, you know, take care of this, you know. Yeah. And they handle it, you know. So I'm I'm just a, in between the contractor. Yeah. Just conduct just conducting people. Please have found this big, deep, dark shit going on over here. So I'm gonna call in the the light. <laughs> and if you mm -hmm. could just deal with that, that would be fantastic. And in our crew like here, smiles. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yep, I love it. Remember, um, having have vacuum cleaners. You know. <laughs> having them going. Yep, having oh, yeah. them going from everywhere. Um, so what I what I would like to ask you, um, just as a last question to finish off with, uh, we've obviously talked a lot about getting help from spirit guides, getting help from higher dimensionals. There's probably a lot of people who are wanting to connect with their spirit guides who perhaps don't know how. And also something that I think is, again, super important and not fucking talked about enough is how you qualify when something contacts you that it is a, a higher dimensional or someone, a spirit guide and not a dark entity fucking with you uh, or trying to interfere and, and make you think bad things, do bad things. So I know you do a lot of work with that sort of stuff. So is there some advice we can give to people on that? Well, I mean, first of all, you know, when you, um, you know, try to get in touch with your high self, you know, I would definitely use 
the formal meditation, like a video first, you know? I mean, I have those. So you have a framework, you know? The protection is set up on that. Yeah. You know? I mean, otherwise, you know, um, so again, of course, divine harmony, highest good, divine harmony, most benevolent outcomes, you know, protection from, you know, um, service to self beings, you know, the dark hearts, so to say. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> so and we talked about this already, you know? And... Um, so, you know, then you have pretty much put up a no trespassing sign. You know, I love that. that. You know, and they're still, they're going to try to trespass, you know, some of them. Yeah. You know? And so, but, uh, you know, then, uh, you know, you can get in touch with them, you know, through your spirit guides opening your crown chakra. You have to be grounded first and open your crown chakra. If your crown chakra okay. is not open. You know, <laughs> not so much. You're not attacked, you know, you're not in the higher dimensions, you know, these yeah. are dimensional gates, you know, and but you gotta also be, in, you know, have your heart chakra open and smile, you know, because they better be of love, you know, and if you're not with love and vibration, it's not gonna work, it's just gonna be all you know, no stuff. good, <laughs> yeah, this is a moment of speculation, than anything, yeah, you know? yeah, and so, um. Then, um, you know, let's say you invite your high self. Let's say I always start with the female high self. You know, women are kind of nicer, more polite. Um, you know, so uh, one really safe way is to just um, put a, or imagine a flame of violet light around them or a column of violet light. Yep. You know, if they don't like that, uh, yeah, interested. they. I've I've had to, I've had done some meditations before where where I've where I've done this again. Learned it off you and put some violet light down, and whatever I'm looking at has started squirming, looking like they are <laughs> in pain. And it, I'm like, get the that is not get the fuck. <laughs> please please clear that. Archangel Michael, get that out of the way. Uh, but yeah, it does. It happens. <laughs> and I, and I do all the protection, and so I've crawled in everything first, and still sometimes they get through. So it's good to do layers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you know that works very well yeah. um then um well i had one case <laughs> the dragon came in <laughs> you know and dragon generally doesn't come in as high self you know they're either you know radiant oh like, oh as the high or, self and <laughs> yeah you know you yeah. know they're either luminous you know beings you know just luminous or like you know gods and goddesses you know like you know yeah. beautiful beautiful dragon. radiant you know, but <laughs> dragon no you know so <laughs> so you know so i thought well let's let's work this. <laughs> you know, so i asked hmm this is something you know that we, we can do for you you know is there something that we can offer you you know as an offering you know and um yeah, it likes meat. <laughs> you know, like, she liked to have, you know, raw meat or blood. Yes, yes, yes. You know, and so <laughs> no, you know, I don't think you are a high self. <laughs> the fuck? Oh my god, yeah, I mean, you know, I yeah. So we just put the violet light, you know, and uh, you know, the bum buggered off, you know. <laughs> yeah. So another also, the the, sorry, the dark, the something that you've you've said again before that um, if it's something negative, they don't like love. They don't like the vibration of love. So just they, they, they hate it. Yeah, they, they blasting out it. love from your chest and and smiling yeah. and stuff. It's going to scare off a lot of stuff anyway. It's it's like you know if you have somebody that's into <laughs> heavy metal and you play and play Mozart to him all day. <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. this is... <laughs> Great analogy, That's, I love that. That messes them up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, the other thing, you know, that I like to do is like, I mean, I, I kind of nowadays kind of feel by the vibe, you know, whether the vibe is off, you know, and many yeah. like, you know, like the vibe is kind of off, you know, uh, it's not right. But, uh, you know, another kind of uh, nice way is, you know, you start projecting love on this. You know, and even if they're gods or goddesses, you know, you project love onto them. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there is a point, or mountains or trees, you know, and there is a point, you know, where love comes back, when an echo of love comes back. Okay. You know, and it better be, you know, love and you're not know, nice, you know, you can hopefully judge for yourself. And when that comes, you know, I take this as an invitation, you know, of you know, benevolent, you know, and we are open. You know? Yeah. And to then I just have them run love, you know, just pull in the love into the heart and then send love back and forth, you know, so there's, 
you know, as soon as, you know, they're synergized. Yeah, makes you feel yeah. real good as well. Those of you who have, haven't had these experiences before, um, especially oh those of you who have ever taken ecstasy, uh, <laughs> like it does it. I mean, uh, the reason I got a tune for Reiki six years ago, one of the reasons I was like, that shit makes me feel like I'm high. I'm, I want to be able to do that. <laughs> literally is that my, actually one of my reasons I, w- I wasn't very spiritual at all I didn't consider myself spiritual when I got attuned for Reiki and I, I literally was like that shit makes me feel so good I want to be able to do it to myself <laughs> well this was actually one of my first drug experiences like I'm like hmm, I want to feel always like this you know mm-hmm. and so I just had to put the work into that you know yeah to, to get there you know I got the teaser first you know and then you have to work for it yeah, you do. <laughs> Keeping the energy up. Um, amazing. Well, I think I've pretty much worked through most of my points I want to ask. Dave. I think we've got through a lot of a lot of information. Hopefully people listening to this are going to get a lot from it. Um, before we finish up, can I please just ask you to let everyone know um, where we can find you and how we can get in touch with you. So anyone wanting sessions um, and also your YouTube channel and anything else that you want to tell people about? Okay, so you can get in touch with me, you know, uh, my videos, just uh, type in on YouTube or Tools for Ascension by Wolfgang. And uh, I have about 150 videos out there now, you know, and then uh, just ask it to be guided to the one that's most benevolent for you. Then, you know, uh, and then your eyes probably will be guided to this. You know? That's yeah. one way. And if you want a session with me, send me an email. You know, so email addresses are like in the, you know, below. I'll put it on the end of this. Those of you watching on YouTube yeah. also, I'll, I'll put his um, email on the end of this and all of his links will be in the description box below also. Right. In the credits. If you're smart, you should be able to find it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, if, you, if you're too lazy, you know, just write in the comments, <laughs> you know, and we will find you and track you down. <laughs> track you down and give you light and love yeah your wife would never be the same again oh my god amazing this is a great, this is a great finish to the show here. <laughs> we will track you down and forcibly give you light and love um, amazing well um wolfgang thank you so so much for coming on we've been trying to set up this podcast i think since last year actually since i actually stopped doing the podcast and relaunched it um so something obviously didn't want it getting out there or we'll just call it divine timing <laughs> and accept that maybe more people are ready to hear this stuff so thank you so much for coming on um and everyone who is listening this will be out um in a couple of weeks from recording this and i'm going to be releasing these podcasts every two weeks now so the last podcast if you didn't listen to it we went over drugs and addiction and the next one is going to be all about light language light codes channeling ets so make sure you check that out <laughs>